introduction. My name is Abhishek and I'm representing an organization called uh, Certified Human Resource Management Professional by Ripples Learning. Certified Human Resource Management Professional. It's a certification program in HR, uh, which we offer in uh, collaboration with Pearson View. And uh, it is something that uh, has uh, certification programs in different areas of HR. There are various specializations um, and uh, uh, also generalist programs. We have programs like for HRBP, for foundation, which is for beginners, and also certification programs in specializations. And that is what I want to quickly talk about today. So for example, if you uh, visit our specializations, you will see BEI. Now, behavioral event interviewing is a specialization by uh, CHRMP. Uh, which is a very, very specific technique of behavioral event interviewing, which is hugely in demand uh, these days. Actually, it's been in demand for a while, but I think lately you see a sort of a uh, almost a converging traction from different uh, areas uh, of uh, uh, influence, whether it is in HR or it is in um, uh, research, in assessment centers, everywhere BEI is being used. So now behavioral uh, event interviewing is something uh, which, of course, uh, takes into cognizance the past behavior of the candidate and extends that to the predicted future behavior of the candidate. Now, this, for example, requires the usage of what we are going to discuss today, which is behavioral uh, indicators and how to write them. Uh, if you further look at our specialization offerings, you see competency mapping. Again, a very, very critical uh, component of modern HR. Uh, any progressive organization which has a good uh, uh, and uh, modern HR department tries to have a competency-based HRM. So mainly there are two kinds of HR in the world. Uh, one is the job analysis, traditional HR based upon job analysis and uh, job uh, descriptions and job specifications, the one that we are all familiar with. And the other kind of HR is the competency-based HR, which is the modern HR, which is new. Uh, which is based upon the idea of competencies because the competency uh, itself is an idea which is very new and very interesting and very unique and it has changed the way the world looks at uh, HRM. In fact, a few weeks ago, we had a webinar on competency and you'll also find webinar about competency in our resource hub uh, if you become a member, right? So uh, we have uh, this uh, competency mapping also Actually, competency mapping is all about organizing and categorizing and putting into boxes and levels uh, uh, something called behavioral indicators. These behavioral indicators are also, then they are called competency indicators when they occur inside a competency matrix and they are used for things like, so you essentially organize the competencies within a competency area, you call them competency indicators, you call the level at which they occur, a competency level, and uh, of course, um, all of them together create the competency framework. When you cross-reference the competencies uh, indicators with the roles uh, which those indicators apply to, that is called a competency matrix. Now, this is a mouthful, and if you are not familiar with competencies, chances are you would not have understood much of what I just said. But this is precisely why it's important to learn about competencies because they really are how most modern and progressive organizations do HR these days. So it's important to learn about them. So even this certification, for example, competency mapping uh, talks about the need. So you can see here, right? Create positive and negative competency indicators for different competency headers. There you go. That's the today's webinar, what it is about. It's about creating these competency indicators, creating these behavioral competency indicators, right? Similarly, if you go to behavioral event interviewing, uh, you again see a similar kind of a learning outcome will be there, which is uh, uh, create co positive and negative competency indicators for uh, uh, different competency headers. So it's, it's essential. And of course, this is from a point of view of application. If you are a practitioner of HR, then all of this is relevant because it helps you to apply uh, HR, uh, apply these principles of competency within the domain of HR and achieve various outcomes. I mean, whatever it is you're trying to do, whether you are trying to train people or whether you are trying to 
select people or you're trying to uh, hire people or you're trying to promote people for all of this competency indicators play an important role uh, but the moment uh, we uh, talk about uh, uh, how to start this process and one of the key skills really that you need is the ability to write good behavioral indicators right and that is what this session is all about now these are of course certification programs uh, certification in behavioral event interviewing certification in competency mapping and there are several other certifications also which also need some of these uh, things that we are talking about but uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we we are not going to go into detail uh, into those but yeah two clear areas which require behavioral indicators are uh, our uh, certification in behavioral event interviewing and certification in uh, competency mapping. I mean, these two certifications we teach it, but of course we are going to talk to you talk to you about it uh, outside of the purview of our certification program. Don't forget to press the like button and leave your comment. Share the video and subscribe to our channel for more HR related content. To never miss a notification on our latest uploads, make sure you hit the bell icon. So uh, now uh, let's get started with uh, the session. I think hope, hopefully I've just explained a little bit of the context of uh, what is it that we do. Uh, 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 I mean, what, what we do is we offer a certification in HR in association with Pearson View and different fields of HR, different domains of HR. But today we are going to talk about writing behavioral competency indicators, which is unique in its usefulness in the domains of competency mapping and behavioral event interviews. Because behavioral event interviews, you will need competency indicators to match with the answers of the candidate. So when the a candidate is answering your questions, they are talking to you, they're giving you the answers. You need to match it with your behavioral indicators to find out how you want to rate the candidate or if they meet the expectations that you have from them, right? So. Uh, uh, so, uh, so that's what we are talking about actually, right? Now, uh, this is what we are discussing, behavioral indicators, right? Now, uh, very clearly two uh, areas that we established which need behavioral indicators are uh, your uh, behavioral event interviewing, right? And uh, the other one is competency mapping. Now, these are not the only areas which need. So for example, if you want to do any kind of assessment, right? Uh, assessment centers, if you want to run assessment centers, uh, assessment centers also need uh, behavioral indicators because it is on the basis of these behavioral indicators that assessments are actually run. If you want to do a very scientific assessment of a skill of a candidate, of an individual, then you need to look at the assessment center of the person uh, you need to look at the behavioral indicators of the person. So usually what happens in an assessment center, right? What happens in an assessment center is uh, people uh, go into the assessment center to get assessed and then they are given different types of exercises. It could be a case study that they have to crack. It could be a, a presentation that they have to make. It could be a game that they have to play. It could be a group game that they have to play. So for example, there might be five or 10 people and you might ask them to divide them into three or four people uh, groups. And then each group has to sort of make a paper tower or has to do something else. Some, some group task is there. And while they engage in that group task, the assessors sort of observe the behavior of the individual and they match it with the pre-existing behavioral indicators that they have already defined and they have with themselves, right? So it's used quite a lot in assessment centers, right? Uh, it can, of course, also be used for uh, selection and uh, talent uh, selection and interviewing, right? Selection process, basically. Right? Uh, we already spoke about behavioral event interviewing, but also in general in the selection process, everything you might not need to conduct an interview. You might want to do a, a psychometric test or some kind of a written test. But even if you are doing a psychometric test or a written test, the assessment process uh, uh, would still be, uh, uh, would require behavioral indicators because you need to know that, okay, these are the 10 indicators that I'm testing. These three indicators, I'm testing them in interviews. These two, I will be testing them through written exam. These other three, we'll be testing them through some other mechanism, maybe a 
job demo or a work demo or a sample presentation or something like that. So we have to figure it out basically, right? So these are some areas where behavioral indicators are needed, right? Now, what do behavioral indicators look like, right? So I just want you to have a view of it so that you can keep that in your head and keep it in your mind as we go through this session, right? So what does a behavioral indicator look like? So let's just uh, pull that out here, right? And uh, see where we want to put it, right? Uh, what does it look like? So I'll just give you one or two very, very simple examples. Yeah. So that you can hold that in your mind while we go through the program, right? So the first uh, example I want to give you is, uh, let us say from communication, right? So in the area of communication, uh, so this is communication is the area, is the competency area. Within communication, uh, the indicator could look something like, something very simple actually, it could be like asks questions in meetings, uh, or presentations, something quite uh, presentations, right? Yeah, ask questions in meetings and presentations. It's a simple statement, but it is interesting because this is what we mean when we say uh, behavioral indicator, right? This is what a behavioral indicator actually looks like. Asks questions in meetings and presentations. Let's now look at another one. Uh, so let us say we come here and we add one more to it. We'll just clear that circle. Uh, we can say, let us say chooses or we, let's say something like demonstrates awareness of different uh, communication styles, let us say something like that, right? Demonstrates awareness. That's another indicator. Now, why is it called a behavioral indicator? It's called a behavioral indicator because it is indicating a particular behavior. It's quite simple, right? It's indicating what is the behavior it is indicating. In this case, this indicator, the first one is indicating that asks questions in meetings or presentation, which means this person asks questions in meetings or presentations. That's the behavior you observe, right? That's the behavior you observe. Now that raises an important question. Another question is how is communication related to ask questions in meetings and presentations? A third question that has been asked is what is behavioral indicators? So first let's try and understand what is a behavior, right? What is a behavior? Now let us say this is an iceberg, right? There is a common uh, example that is given that human behavior is like a human personality is like an iceberg, right? What do we mean by that, right? It means what what is uh, what is unique about icebergs is besides that they are melting these days. What is unique about icebergs is that not all of an iceberg is visible, right? So you have a little bit of an iceberg that is visible. So most of the iceberg is below the water right? Only the tip of the iceberg is usually visible, right? Just this much is the, of the iceberg is visible, right? And most of the iceberg, if you see the bulk of the iceberg is below the surface. And that's why it was, it's so dangerous because sometimes ships will see something like a small rock floating on the, in the ocean. And it will look like a small rock, but it will be this huge ice mountain of ice under that rock. So the tip of the iceberg is visible and most of it is invisible, right? And this is akin or similar to human behavior because what happens with human behavior is that most of our, uh, uh, who we are, what we do, what we think is invisible, isn't it? And very little of us is actually visible. The visible part, what you can see, for example, right now you can see me you can hear me, you can watch my body language, you can see my facial expressions, you can see my hand movements. This part, what you can see actually, what you see right now, what you hear right now, what is observable, 
what can be observed when i say observed means what if somebody is standing there and looking at me they can what can they observe what they can observe is actually behavior right so that is what behavior is right so we have behavior is that which is observable right behavior is that which is observable and what is not observable or oh, tons of stuff tons of stuff is not observable right for example my ideas my attitude my knowledge even my skills are not observable unless i express them in which case they become behaviors right so my knowledge is not visible my knowledge my attitude is not visible my ideas are not visible unless they become behaviors you can look at a behavior and try to guess my knowledge my skills my abilities my uh, uh, values my identity my beliefs um, that's identity not identify identity beliefs faith uh, maybe my um, uh, convictions uh, my opinions right uh, and uh, maybe my uh, uh, my uh, what inspiration right? what inspires me all of that is not visible right so you see this chunk of stuff is below the surface it's not visible and only a little bit of it visible so what is visible what is visible is stuff like how did i do something or how did i say something or what did i say or what did i demonstrate or what did i ask or did i phrase a question or did i look at somebody in a particular way and all of that is visible so this is actually what behavior is so remember important to distinguish between behavior and others right behavior is something that is visible a good way of remembering this is uh, one of my uh, colleagues liked likes to say that a good way of thinking about it is that a behavior is something that you can video record isn't it so i'm trying to draw a camera here uh, yeah so it's something that you can video record right so if you can video record it <laughs> sorry it's beginning to look like a dog but it's not a dog it's actually a video camera so if you can record it then it is a behavior that's the ideal definition of course a lot of times what happens is in hr and when we are dealing with competency frameworks etc we are not able to completely uh, adhere to this definition but most of the time we try so this part this visible part so what is a behavioral indicator then something a behavior now what is a behavior so for example knowledge what would knowledge what would a statement of knowledge be a statement of knowledge would be uh, knows importance of asking questions right that's a knowledge statement it's i know i know abhishek knows the importance of asking questions that's knows he knows it or she knows it but the problem with knows is that this is not visible right you can't video record somebody knowing something it's not a behavior so what is the behavior what is the behavior if knowing the importance of asking questions is the knowledge or even skill if you look at skill right if you look at skill and you say something like um can ask uh questions right what is that that's a skill right can ask questions right values you can say maybe prioritizes asking questions we are just taking that example because we took that in the beginning in the in the earlier part of the session right so prioritizes asking questions right if you look at belief we can say that maybe um believes that asking questions is important right all of this we can put right now it's important to remember that behave all of this is invisible right so this is invisible this is invisible this is invisible when i say invisible it cannot be observed it's not a behavior what is a behavior 
behavior is when you say something like asks questions in meetings and presentations right that's why it's a behavioral indicator now these indicators are used quite a lot actually if you see if you've seen a competency framework you will see that these you constantly come come across these kind of behavioral indicators in competency matrix and competency indicators behavioral event interviews but this is what distinguishes them so you see how why these two are different are you able to see that that knows importance of asking questions is knowledge which is hidden invisible can ask questions ability to ask questions is also hidden unless all of them become demonstrated they become a behavior they become manifest right and then that we see so we take that into consideration what is the behavioral what is the visible part of this what are we seeing actually what is visible that is what a behavioral indicator is right uh, so i hope that makes sense right uh, in terms of what behavioral indicators are they indicate this line this statement asks questions in meetings and presentations indicates that uh, so if for example let us say this is an iceberg of communication because somebody said what does communication have to do with the behavioral indicator right so we can say that if this whole iceberg that we are seeing right now is an iceberg of communication everything about communication is here ideas about communication beliefs about communication attitude knowledge about communication skill about communication behavior about communication then you can see what is the difference these are this is a value of communication this is about beliefs about communication knowledge of communication skills of communication but here we are really talking about asks questions in meetings and presentations which is a indicator of a behavior this statement is then indicator of a behavior in the area of communication right others are all invisible so when we talk about competency mapping or behavioral event interviewing or any of these frameworks in hr it's important to talk about observable indicators observable behavioral indicators all of all of modern hr is based upon competencies and competencies are nothing but observable indicators of behavior that lead to successful outcomes right so those indicators so this is a behavioral indicator and those collection of these indicators which leads to a successful effective outcome is called a competency isn't it that's what a competency or that's what a competency indicator is so i hope uh, that the questions you asked earlier have been answered and uh, somebody also asked for some more examples so i'll be happy to give those examples uh, so let's just go back to our original mind map and we will look at this so here is a, a fun behavior asks questions in meetings and presentations another behavior demonstrates awareness of different communication styles so see we are not just saying has awareness we can just say has right we can't, why can't we just say has awareness of different communication styles that's also good enough it means the same thing they have awareness of different communication styles the reason we can't do that is because has awareness is uh is hidden demonstrates awareness means that he is demonstrating the awareness which means they are showing the awareness which is visible has awareness is hidden or latent not observable demonstrates awareness is observable another example could be for example we could have a maybe um uh, let us say uh, chooses a communication medium uh depending upon circumstances let us say more simpler a uh, slightly more ambiguous but still meeting our criteria another example could be let us say um uh conveys complex information to experienced groups right is a very specific kind of behavior conveys complex information to experienced groups a very uh uh a very uh, specific kind of question right now i have a request let's move out of communication let's move to teamwork sure let's move to teamwork 
Now, if we go to teamwork, what do we say, right? We say um, maybe we can have an indicator which looks something like um, uh, collaborates effectively with others who have a different different point of view, right? Uh, we can have maybe, um, uh, let us say, uh, seeks information from others and listens to build trust, right? That could be one example, right? Uh, demonstrates accountability by meeting deadlines and uh, deadlines and schedules, let us say, right? Uh, we can say maybe uh, organizes meetings uh, and, or we can even say organizes informal get togethers to keep, uh, to keep, uh, keep the morale high of the team things like that. So I mean, I'm just writing this off the top of my head. But of course, you could have uh, indicators that show teamwork, you could also have indicators which show other things, right. So uh, I hope I hope that makes sense. And you're able to see uh, where these indicators make sense. Now, this is also true for Java, actually, this need not be only for communication and teamwork, you could even do it for JavaScript, right. So uh, you could write, for example, that uh, um, uses um, functions, uh, uses functions to create modular uh, and error free programs, right. So this is also as much of a as much of a um, of a, a competency indicator as all of these are, which are mainly about communication and teamwork. So you can have for JavaScript, you can have for technical areas also, a communicate behavioral indicators or competency indicators are not limited just to uh, uh, just to uh, uh, soft skills or behavioral skills kind of a thing, right? Though they are actively used over there quite a lot, but they can also be used for technical areas. I hope uh, that uh, that makes sense, right? Now, uh, uh, again, I will quickly check if you have any questions. Uh, if so far what we have done is clear, indicator. Uh, how do we write the competency indicator is the question we need to answer now. So let's try and answer that question. Now, if you see, if you look at these indicators, what do all of them have in common? Asks questions in meetings or presentation, demonstrates awareness of different communication styles, chooses a communication medium depending upon circumstances, conveys complex information to experienced groups. All of them are sort of following a format, right? And the format is that uh, there is a kind of a verb, right? If you see the beginning of all of them, what do you see? You see a verb actually, right? Asks, demonstrates, chooses, right conveys so that's that seems to be the beginning of all of these indicators and followed by that after the verb what do we see we see the example of a behavior right so always start with the verb and they're all by the way all all starting with like asks demonstrates chooses we are not saying ask questions we are not saying demonstrate uh, awareness we are saying actually uh, demonstrates awareness. So this just seems to be the way it is written actually, right? Now, if we uh, look uh, further, uh, we, uh, this is what we are seeing. Now, in some cases, what might also happen is uh, we might have a, a kind of a indicator, which also talks about a result. So I'll just give you an example. So for example, here we are saying, ask questions in meetings and presentations. But actually, we can even write this as ask questions in meetings and presentation leading to 
improved understanding so here sort of the improved understanding part is implicit it's unsaid it's understood that such a benefit exists so this benefit is also sometimes mentioned it's not always mentioned but it can be mentioned even if you don't write it it's fine it's perfectly fine ask questions in meetings or presentations but we are we are just if we add this it's clear that this is a good behavior it's not a negative behavior which is not always clear by i mean it's understood usually behavioral indicators are positive they because simply because for competency mapping actually see all of this comes from competency mapping and we do competency mapping with effective people we do competency mapping with people who are top performers so since competency mapping happens only with people who are really good so the behaviors that are elicited from them which look like this which look like the behavioral indicators we are looking at right now are also effective they lead to positive outcomes but this is not a requirement this is not an in no way is this a compulsory requirement that every behavioral indicator should be positive there can be negative behavioral indicators also for example you can have a behavioral indicator which says um um uh, 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 uh screams and shouts when uh, someone disagrees with them right that is also a behavioral indicator it's a behavioral indicator right screaming and shouting is observable behavior if somebody is disagreeing with me and i start screaming and shouting it's a very very observable behavior but it's not an effective behavior it's not a behavior that leads to effectiveness and therefore we don't take it that much seriously and we don't use it in making our selection choices or uh, or in training or in um, uh, in promotions etc we I mean, sometimes we do use it to uh, to identify bad behaviors even in interview processes if you have anti indicators or contra indicators then you know that this is not something i'm looking for in a candidate right so yeah so i was saying that there are three parts to this if you notice the first part is there is a verb like asks then there is a behavior and then there might or might not be a result right so that's that sort of is the formula right that's the formula what is the formula the formula is that we basically have um we basically have a uh, kind of uh, this right we have um verb followed by um a behavior right and then sort of followed by might or might not use the result what could or could not be the result so for example let's see what we have used right uh maybe demonstrates awareness of insurance of stock market uh functioning it's not very grammatically accurate so we'll just say demonstrate awareness of stock markets and how they work right so in this what is the uh, what is the verb demonstrates is the verb and awareness of stock markets is actually the unit for which the verb is applying it's not really a behavior per se but the whole thing becomes a behavior that demonstrating the awareness is a behavior you can have if you remember we had something like uh, uh, presents complex information to experienced groups right here again uh, presents is the verb and complex information presenting complex information to experienced groups is the uh, is the uh, behavior indicator so this is how all behavioral indicators are written so uh, essentially even if you are doing research for example for competency mapping if you are doing research then you do the research by looking at the exemplar the person whom you are writing the indicators for the person who is who indicates effective behavior and you write down the indicators in this format 
you write the verb usually with an s this s is unique it's there in a behavioral indicator you will not find it in things like learning objective and all learning objectives also sometimes look like this but they are not exactly like this because they that s will be missing from the beginning right so uh, now let me show you some examples of uh, these indicators appearing in different publications but uh, i hope all of you got that uh, uh, if you have any questions i'll be happy to look at uh, your questions uh, uh, Yes, uh, go ahead, uh, please ask me. Yes, any questions, please ask me, right? Okay, so now I'll quickly show you some examples of how this works, right? Uh, so uh, let me show you the competency framework of United Nations, right? So this is United Nations competency framework, and they talk about these uh, core competencies, leadership, communication, innovation, delivery, people management, and then they have a competency scale, which you can see here, uh, leadership. Uh, and, 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 and can you see that they sort of, even they have used it here, takes initiative, creates excitement for work, through demonstrated excellent empowers individuals and teams to act independently. Then as we go to level one, we see things like takes responsibility for quality of own work. Here, the area is responsible for own work, uses resources, methods, partners, and information effectively, acts as an individual contributor, takes initiative, identifies opportunities, checks assumptions, assumes responsibility, shares information, seeks and recognizes, encourages dialogue, can you see the sort of the formula that we discussed is what is being used here for the scale actually these are not even competencies these are more like scales but uh, when we when we start looking at competencies we will see that this is what is there uh, can you see that manages self or supervises others in process execution seeks opportunities to learn and to share encourages collaboration so the same formula that we have discussed about the indicators which measure behavior is being repeated uh, uh, now, some of them are not very well written. For example, if you see here, demonstrates, uh, uh, demonstrates, uh, encourages team engagement. It's not really that observable, but you will need, uh, maybe it would be more observable if you, if it said something like invites others to share their ideas to encourage engagement. That is more observable. Inviting others to share ideas is quite a video recordable thing. But just saying encourages team engagement is not that logical, uh, not that observable. So it's not very well written, but it is something that is there. So often happens in, uh, in, in, in nature. Actively mentors and develops leaders, engages motives, values, and goals of individuals, anticipates future capability. So these are all examples. And now you see there are also some contraindicators, some indicators that there's competency is not present. You can see that here, right? Uh, does not help people improve themselves, assumes no responsibility for facilitating development. So these are examples of indicators that are negative, actually. They are negative indicators, isn't it? Uh, and then, of course, we can go down and we can see other things in communication as well. Listens, eager to develop professional voice, shares information, listens to develop awareness of client needs, advocates, able to change mind of self, peer, and partners. So these are some examples of Behavioral indicators, completes work under established methods, adapts and implements, makes new ideas work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope that gives you an idea of what behavioral indicators look like. I showed you an example from uh, United Nations. I have another example from Harvard. I can share that with you as well. So uh, let's just quickly take a look at how Harvard does it. And uh, hopefully uh, that will clarify uh, things for us a little bit more, right? So uh, if you see, um, this is the Harvard Competency Dictionary and uh, they have different things here, building trust, coaching, but let's go down and see how they have actually written the indicators. So can you see that? Uh, I wonder if you can. Uh, let me just make it slightly bigger so that you can see it. Yeah, ensures that the purpose and importance of the team are clarified, guides the setting of specific and measurable team goals and objectives, helps to clarify roles and responsibilities of team members, helps ensure 
that necessary steering review or support functions are in place, so on and so forth. So the same thing will happen again and again throughout this document, right? Everywhere we see, everywhere they write about behavioral indicators, this is how they will actually talk about it, right? Actively seeks information to understand customer circumstances. Actively seeks information. That's what they are saying, right? Actively seeks information. Shares information with customers to build their understanding of issues and capabilities. Builds rapport and cooperative relationship with customers, etc. Right? So so on and so forth. So that is how behavioral indicators are behavioral indicators are actually written. Now, of course, uh, all of this and more is something that you will uh, learn about in our, uh, uh, like, like I shared with you earlier, uh, you, you can learn about it in our uh, certification program. Uh, but if you are not uh, really ready for the certification program right now, I can also recommend an alternative to you. And uh, that alternative is essentially to uh, look at our academy and become a member. Membership is very reasonable. Actually, uh, you can become a member for the first month at least. It's just uh, maybe uh, uh, 99 rupees per month. And then you have access to more than 300 hours of more than 150 hours, sorry, of recorded sessions and many, many templates and uh, schedules and, st and, and policy templates and stuff like that. So you can look at all of that and see if you find any of it useful. So uh, I already showed you the certifications in the beginning. These are the different certifications. Now I'm talking about membership. If you become a member, you essentially see like this, what we are discussing right now, like this, there are more than 80 webinars on different topics of HR, right? So this is, we call it a CPD member, which is a continuous professional development member. You can just visit our website, chrmp.com, CPD membership, and you can become a member, member over there. And uh, if you become a member, this is the dashboard you'll have access to actually. This is what you will see uh, once you are a member. And if you go to resource hub, you will see literally more than 80 webinars on different topics related to HR, everything that you can think of. How do bell curves work? How to create behavioral event interviewing questions? What is digital HR? How does leadership work? What is uh, circle of influence and circle of concern? What is the difference between uh, different compensation planning methods? Uh, what is point plan method for compensation planning? Uh, all the different areas of HR that you can think of, we have addressed in these sessions. So you can see these are all recordings that exist. So we have different topics, CNB planning, planning and creating performance pay structure, CNB planning, creating an exit interview form, employee grievance handling, five employment, employee engagement activities, psychological safety, how that works, how to conduct a focus group in a job analysis, how to design interview questions, designing a full and final settlement form, creation of an appointment letter. Hundreds of things are there. This is the membership part, the CPD membership, continuous professional development. Of course, if you go for the certification program, then you can go to my courses also, and you can go through the certification uh, module, the learning module, the, that's available in a recorded format. And once you are done with that, you can take the exam. And if you take the exam, you will get the Pearson View validated certificate from our side, right? So these are, for example, different courses that are there and you can uh, attend them and you can learn from them and then you can take the exam, right? These are all uh, courses that are recorded in 4K, uh, very, very high quality courses, uh, which are uh, available and uh, you can uh, 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 learn from them uh, by just watching the videos and then answering some quizzes. Besides the recorded videos that are available, every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday, we conduct a one and a half hour session on HR and the recordings again become available in. Uh, so you see some of the courses are finished. That's why they are crossed out here. If you go here, uh, on introduction, you'll be able to see the actual course. So every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, we conduct from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. a new topic in HR. And then the recording of that gets loaded to resource up what I showed you earlier as a membership option, right? So you can, uh, uh, you can either attend these seminars live or you can, uh, so you can see this is uh, uh, my colleague. He's talking about uh, something related to uh, HR operations here, right? Uh, HR policies. So you can see the quality of the video is so nice. 
we have uh, really outdone ourselves in international quality, world class quality, and uh, we have 4K recordings with uh, different. CHRMP learning system. So you can watch some of these videos. This is if you get certification. So you see, basically, there are two things here. One is a certification. You can go to our website, chrmp.com, choose one of our certification programs and go through the certification. Or you can become a member. If you become a member, you won't get any certificate. But you can watch hundreds of hours of recorded uh, material on HR. And every week, three new topics are conducted. Every month, 12 new topics are conducted. Every year, 144 new topics are conducted. So we call it continuous professional development. So everything and anything that is latest in the world of HR, you will get to learn if you become a member. So certification for certification and membership. I'm sorry, certification for certificate and credentialing and membership for your ongoing development. That's the offer we have. And of course, if you buy a certification, you also get a few months of membership free with that. So that's uh, how that's the main offering that we have. I do encourage you to learn more about it in our website, which is uh, uh, www.chrmp.com. Remember, our certification is in association with Pearson View. It is available in more than uh, 190 countries with more than uh, 5000 testing centers. Uh, in 2020, that is last year, people from 40 countries have attended our certification courses, including India, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Canada, Bhutan, uh, America, uh, many countries in uh, many uh, countries in Africa. I can't name because there are so many. Uh, Australia, Middle East. There are many people who do these programs with us. So I would strongly encourage you to consider adding CHRMP to your credentials, both for certification. And of course, if you're interested in ongoing development, then the membership is a good option, right? So that's the main offer that we have.